What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. To continue on with my series of how to install Plex, today I will be installing it on a new FreeNAS installation. The first couple minutes of this video will show the installation of FreeNAS on a virtual machine. If you already have FreeNAS installed, you can click the little skip button at the top of this video. For this tutorial, I am going to be using FreeNAS version 9.3. You can download the latest build of FreeNAS from their website at www.freenas.org. It should come in an ISO file that you can then burn to a disk or a USB drive and then use that to install it on your new server. After you get booted into the FreeNAS installation wizard, everything is fairly straightforward. So just follow the prompts and you should be completed within 5 to 10 minutes. After installation is done and you reboot the system, you will be greeted with a console setup screen. Unless you have any advanced things to set up here, you most likely won't need to do anything else. Instead, take a look at the IP address listed near the bottom and use your favorite browser to navigate to that address. Once you get to the starting screen, it will ask you to log in. Remember that your username here will be root, all lowercase. The password should be the one that you created during installation. Now the first thing we're going to do is set up volumes with our hard drives. For this example, I included five 15 GB drives for media storage, and then a separate 10 GB drive to simulate an SSD for the Plex application. So from the left hand side, expand the storage option, then volumes, and then click on a volume manager. Give your volume a name like media volume, for example, and then drag the little circle below to include all of the drives you want to use. FreeNAS should automatically select a file system type which you can see on the left hand side, but make sure to pick the one that you prefer. In this example, it auto-selected RAID Z, which will give me one drive of parity. You can change this to a number of other options to give you things like two or three drives of parity, or you could even set it up to have a complete mirror of all your data. It's all up to you. For me, I'm going to go ahead and keep it as RAID Z and then click Add Volume. Then, to set up a second volume with my leftover drive, the 10 GB SSD for the Plex application, I will click Volume Manager again, give it a name, and drag over the remaining drive. The default drive setup should say Stripe. Now click on the Add Volume button again. Now we need to create two data sets, one for the media and one for the Plex gel. So if you're not already there, click on View Volumes from the left hand side. Expand your new volume, click on it, and from the bottom click on the icon to set up a new data set. If you started with the media volume, just name it Media. Keep everything else the same and click on Add Data Set. Once done, click on your second volume and repeat the process. This time, set the name to Jail. Before you leave this page, click on your newly created media data set, and from the bottom, click on Permissions. We have to make sure and click the right permission box located underneath the Others column. This will allow us to have guest access to the shared directory we are about to create. Of course, this could be up to you depending on what kind of system or what kind of permissions you want to set up. But for now, to get up and running, let's go ahead and follow this. You might also need to select the option to add permissions recursively but I doubt it because that would only apply to you if you already had data stored in this volume. But if this is a new setup, then you won't have to worry about it at all. So go ahead and click on the Change button at the bottom and close the window. Now look up the page and click on the icon that says Gels. You will see some options to configure your gels, so we're going to set the gel location to the separate volume we created that would be named Gel. Keep in mind that you might not have a separate SSD to use like this, but I recommend it for better transcoding and operating speeds. After you find the location, click on Save at the bottom of the screen. And now we want to create a new shared folder that will allow us to easily move our media files over to the new server. So from the left hand side, extend the sharing option, then Windows CIFS Shares, and click on Add Windows CIFS Share. Okay, so I'm using this one because it's the one that's the most compatible and most common. It will work with Windows, Linux, and Apple machines. So when your window pops up, you will need to select the path for the new shared folder. So go ahead and click on Browse and navigate to your media volume and select the media folder. Go down a bit and name this something simple like Media again, and then click Allow Guest Access and then click OK. If this is your first time creating a Windows Shared folder, it will ask you if you want to activate the service. Since we want to do that, go ahead and click on Yes and you should see this screen. 
Now you shouldn't have to do anything else from here as it should already activate the service automatically. Now we will want to open up a file explorer on our PC and navigate to the new network location. For my server, the IP address is 192.168.74.132. So I will type that into the browser with two backslashes in front of it and then add another backslash at the end and then type in the name of my share, which is simply media. Once you hit enter, assuming you type that in correctly, you should be inside an empty folder. Now we need to create folders that we want to use for our new Plex server. So things like movies, TV shows, workouts, comedy, documentaries, etc. should be created here. This is basically the foundation to your media organization. At bare minimal, you will need a separate folder for movies and TV shows if you have both. The rest, completely up to you. Once done, let's go ahead and copy over a demo file that will ensure our new server is working properly. So I will copy over this back to the future folder I have created and use it as my first round of testing. I want to worry about copying over a massive amount of data just yet. It's best to make sure that everything works first and then worry about loading it up later. Okay, so we have our volumes, data sets, and sharing all set up now. For the next step, we have to install the Plex plugin. To do this, go back to your free NAS web interface and click on the plugins icon at the top of the page. From here, you should easily find the Plex media server listed below. Just click on it and select install from the bottom. Then click OK and let the installation process complete. It may take a while to load completely, so just be patient. Now that Plex is installed, click on the gels icon at the top and you should see a Plex media server listed below. From here, we have to assign storage to it. So click on the Plex media server and click the add storage icon at the bottom. From here, we will set the source destination to the Plex media folder we created earlier. Make sure to set it to the parent media folder and not one of the individual folders we created for TV shows and movies. Setting it to the parent folder will give it full access to all other folders inside of it. For the destination location, just assign it to the media folder that the system already created. Once done, click on OK. Now it's the moment of truth. Go back to your plugins and this time click on the tab to show all of your installed plugins. You will see the Plex media server here with a little switch you can press to enable it as a service. Go ahead and enable it. Then expand your plugins tree on the left side and click on the Plex media server. You will be greeted with a box that gives you an option to disable security. You will need to check the box next to this so you have access to the Plex interface. Click on OK below and wait for 15 seconds. Then from the left pane, click on Plex media server again and this time click on the link at the top of that box to access your server. From here, you should be in familiar territory as the Plex web interface is the same on any platform. You will have access to server settings that will allow you to log in, set up outside access, and so on. But for now, let's just go ahead and add a new library. After clicking the Add Library icon and selecting your library type, you will need to browse for your media location. So click on the forward slash on the left, find the media folder, and select Movies. Then just click on the orange Add Library icon and wait for it to scan the directory and add the movie. After a few moments, you should see your movie pop up and you can now click into it. From here, we are going to test the transcoder and make sure everything plays as it should. So go ahead and play your new media file and change the quality to something lower than what it is. If it works, it will confirm that everything is up and running and we are ready to start adding additional libraries and more media to our server. After all this, you will just need to log in and make sure your server can connect to the rest of the world. That is, if you're planning on using it outside of your home. Also, you might want to go through the rest of the settings to configure more options like giving it a name. Everything should look and feel just like any Plex server you have ever created. The options are the same, so you shouldn't run into any issues. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments below. Or, if you want a fast response, you can also tweet me at underscore bite my bits. I've only done a few free NAS installations, so I am in no way considered an expert on the subject, but I will usually try to help if I know the answer. Also, if you have any suggestions on Plex installations that you would like to see a video made about, make sure to let me know. I have a few already planned out, but if any demand pushes me towards anything specific, I might just have to do those first. Make sure to like this video and subscribe below for more Plex related videos. As always, thank you for watching and have a good day.